Hello everyone, this is Professor Stewart, your professor for Interpersonal Communication Online Speech 1318. Uh, the course has been open for a couple of days now. You guys have already gotten started uh, and you've looked at the course syllabus, hopefully, and have taken the syllabus quiz. But I do want to go over the syllabus with you uh, to answer any questions that you may have, any lingering questions that may be in the back of your mind, or just clarify some stuff that maybe you've seen on the syllabus and uh, you just want to know uh, more about something uh, that, that you've read or that you've seen. So first things first, uh, when you start on the first page, this is all of my contact information. Uh, I don't know what your main campus is, but uh, I am housed at University Park. That's where my office is. It's on the 13th floor, uh, office number 802. Um, I, because this is an online class, I don't expect anyone to stop by to come see me. But if you do, it's totally cool to stop by during office hours. And my office hours are right here. They're probably going to change, uh, not very, just slightly. And if they do change, I'll send out an email to let you know that. Um, but if you do want to stop by, and I've had online students stop by before just to say hi. I've had students who were just on campus or in the area and wanted to say hi. Um, and I've had students stop by who wanted to actually just discuss stuff about the class. So it's totally fine. You see my office phone number there. I ask that you try not to call me. Um, if you call me during the office hours, I will be in there, but I jokingly say try not to call me. Well, number one, I'm not a big fan of talking on the phone, but number two, I'm rarely in my office. I feel that when students do call, it's really at odd hours, like late at night uh, for some reason, and I'm not there late at night. I'll get your message in the morning, but if you want to call, that's fine. Just leave a voicemail if I don't answer and I'll try to return your call as soon as possible. But your best bet is to just get in contact with me uh, via email. And you see my email right here. This is uh, my faculty email address, uh, pretty much used for emergencies only. You can email me in D2L. Now, I've had students say I'm having trouble finding you, uh, Professor Stewart, in D2L. And my response to that is you can either respond to a previous email that I've sent, or if you go to the class section of this particular class, and I think it's something like email all instructors or email professor or something, or email faculty, uh, something along those lines. If you check that box, then that gets to me as well. So just be aware of that. I do have uh, Snapchat and Twitter that I use uh, in class. Uh, my Twitter account, I post things about the university going on for Lone Star and for University Park. Uh, I've been known to put a bonus question up on Twitter before. Uh, so it's totally up to you if you want to follow me. You definitely don't have to. And then for uh, Snapchat, I post stories. You can't follow me. You can't chat with me via Snapchat. I don't have it set up that way. But the way I do have it set up is if I can post a story if I see something wherever I am. If I'm in downtown Houston or uh, posted stories when I'm in uh, New York or, or LA or something along those lines and I see something out in real life about what we're, and what's going on is what we're talking about in class, typically I'll post a story about that just to let you know this is what we're talking about or this is uh, what the concept or the theory that we're discussing in real life or in action. So just to let you know about that. The textbook for this class is Connect, uh, where we are in Connect. Uh, several of you have signed up already with the access code for Connect, but I do want you to be aware about the access card. It is sold at the University Park Bookstore. There's no guarantee that that access card or that access code is going to be sold on any other campus bookstore, so something to be aware of. I have heard rumors. I don't know how true this is. I've heard rumors from my online students and my face-to-face -face students that if you buy the Connect access code from the publisher themselves, from McGraw-Hill, it's actually cheaper. Now, I'm supposed to tell you to go through our library, but I say screw that. Get it where you can get it the cheapest. Uh, if that's directly from the publisher, well, then go directly from the publisher. However, you definitely need the access code in order to pass this class, in order to be successful, in order to make an A in the course. I do want you to be aware of this. You are allowed two free weeks of access for Connect. 
So you can sign up and get two free weeks, meaning you can get started right now. Uh, I know some of you might not get paid until the end of the end of the month till the 31st. Well, you can get your two free weeks now. And then when you get paid on the 31st, you can buy the access card. But uh, if you want to be successful in this course, then yes, you do need the access card. As you know, this is an online class, so online participation is a must. It is expected that you're doing that. It's expected that you're being active on the discussion boards. And keep in mind, getting behind is really easy, and it's really hard to catch up once you do that. So uh, with an online presence, you want to make sure you're thoroughly reading the discussion board questions, doing what's asked of you on the discussion boards, and making sure that you're actually completing those, as that is a good chunk of the class. So remember, online discussion boards take the place of face-to-face -face interaction in the classroom. So you want to be active on that. However, if for some reason you're not, you're in jeopardy of being dropped and withdrawn from the class. Uh, if you don't complete three or more modules before March 8th, I will drop you. Uh, that's going into spring break. I will uh, personally drop you and withdraw you from the course. If you do not complete five or more modules before April 6th, I will withdraw you from the course. I will drop you from the class. And if you fail to take the syllabus quiz, you will be dropped from the course as well. Some students say that's kind of harsh. Uh, I don't understand why you do that. And my response is, I'm looking at it from the other point of view, the point of view of, I would rather you have the W on your transcript than an F. Remember, an F stays on your transcript forever. The 0.00, .00 that you get from an F factors into your GPA forever. So I would rather you not have that on your transcript and have the W than to have the F. But if for some reason you're personally thinking about withdrawing from the class, all I ask is that you contact me first. Sometimes students can overreact when it comes to withdrawals. Sometimes uh, students may not see the entire picture that I can see on the other end. So if you're thinking about withdrawing, just email me and tell me why, and uh, now I will give you my honest opinion. I don't know what you guys have heard about me in the past, but one thing I am, and that's honest, brutally honest, there's no point in me sugarcoating stuff for you. I will tell you, yes, you're overreacting, you need to stay in the class, or no, you're on the path to failure. Sometimes, some students don't realize, they get so wrapped up in their personal lives, their family, work, work schedule changes, and that causes you to miss deadlines on the course and the modules, and you get behind, and you can get so far behind that it's really, really hard to keep up. So just something to be aware of. Office hours and emails, as I said before, it's an online class. You're not expected to come to office hours. Typically, you're going to email me. And let's go back to my office hours for a bit. If you notice, uh, there's a chat. It says online chat here. I started this a couple of semesters ago. I have online chat from 6 to 7 through D2L. There's a function in your D2L in which you're able to chat with me, your professor. Uh, I started mostly for my online classes, but notice that most of my face-to-face -face classes actually use it the most. This is your chance to chat with me live uh, and get real-time answers. So for every Tuesday from 6 to 7, we'll have a D2L chat. If something happens and I can't do D2L chat that night, I will send you an email to let you know. But it's a chance for you to get your questions answered immediately instead of sending me an email and having to wait for me to respond. However, you're more than welcome to come up to my office and, and do office hours that way if you'd like. But if you send me an email, it's expected that you're being professional in your email, meaning you're fi filling out the subject line. You're actually sending a greeting and a salutation in the email. So you're saying, Dear Professor Stewart, this is John from your online interpersonal class. And then go into the body of your email. And then at the end, say sincerely or thank you, John. Um, that's a professional email. That's a an email, a type of email sent from a college student to a college professor. So that's the type of correspondence I expect you to do uh, if you are to send me an email. Remember, my name is not Hey. I do have a name and I expect you to use that. For some chapters, I'll do quick hits. You'll start to see those uploaded here in the next couple of days. Um, it's not for every chapter, but it is for some chapters. These quick hits are designed to be supplemental. Um, however, there could be information in the quick hits that's not in your textbook. 
Regardless, whatever I put on the quick hits and whatever I'm explaining, it could be a certain theory I want to go a little bit more in depth on, certain information that from your text that I want to go more in depth on. And sometimes the quick hits have information that is not in your textbook. Regardless, if I post a quick hit, it's fair game for me to post that information or to put uh, information from that quick hit on your exams and on your final exam. So with that said, I don't monitor quick hits. I don't know who's watched them and who hasn't. However, I am warning you, uh, not really warning, I'm just letting you know that is a possibility that information on the quick hits could be on any upcoming exam. All assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, I do realize as online, our online presence here at Lone Star College is getting uh, more, uh, it's getting bigger. We're having more people take online classes who are not in Houston and who are not in Texas. Uh, last semester I had someone in India. Uh, the December mini semester I had someone in Alaska. So they would email me and say, the quizzes aren't open at the correct time or they're already closed or things of that nature. And my response to them is yes, they close at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. So no matter what you are, you have to figure out what is 11.59 Central Standard Time where you are currently. So be aware of that. Um, you are not to email me assignments unless I specifically ask you to do so. Um, and it's expected that you're using your D2L email address and not uh, something from Hotmail or Gmail or Yahoo. Chain of command, essentially, if you have an issue with me, I expect you to come talk to me first. Uh, this is a communications class, so it would be it will behoove you to communicate with me first instead of going above me. And I'll give you this example. If you work at Starbucks in Vintage Park and you have an issue with a coworker or your supervisor, uh, the first person you should talk to is your supervisor. Uh, you can't go straight to the CEO of Starbucks in Seattle and say, hey, I have an issue with my supervisor at your Vintage Park location in Houston. And they don't know who you are. They probably don't even know that there's a store there. So it's essentially the same thing here. If there's some sort of issue, I expect you to come to me first, and I guarantee you we'll figure it out. Now, I don't guarantee that you'll like my answer, but we will figure it out. If for some reason we don't figure it out, then you take the next step, and that's the department chair. His name is Dave Gare. Uh, his office is actually uh, quite close to mine uh, in, at University Park. And then if you and he do not figure it out, then you go to the dean. Uh, there's not a situation where you just jump straight from me to the dean or me to the president, or a, uh, a student at Tomball did a couple of years ago, she went straight to the chancellor. So just be aware of that. One of my favorite parts of the syllabus, something I put in last semester after seeing someone uh, speak at a convention in Chicago was basic needs. Uh, I just want you to be aware of this. There are students walking around Lone Star College University Park uh, who don't know what they're going to eat tonight. And when I say don't know what they're going to eat tonight, I'm not talking about the difference between Chick-fil-A and Chili's. I'm talking about they literally have no food at their house. Uh, we have students at not only at University Park, but of all six campuses in the Lone Star College system who don't know what they're going to eat, who have minimal money to buy food. They can't just walk into HEB and get groceries, or um, they don't have a place to live, or they're worried about their rent, to pay the rent at the end of January. If this is you, I ask that you contact me. Uh, if you're too embarrassed, find a way to contact me. And the reason I say that is because we do have ways that we can help you. Uh, we just had an ice storm. You had Hurricane Harvey, people trying to get back on their feet from that. If you're struggling in this aspect, please contact me because there are services at University Park as well as places that we can direct you to that will help you in this regard. Going hungry is something no student should do. And when you are hungry, it impacts your success in the classroom severely. So just be aware of that. In addition, we have counseling services that you're paying for. Some of you might be depressed. You might be dealing with depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD, uh, domestic abuse. We have people here that can talk to you about this, that can help you out with this. So if you're too embarrassed to, to email me about it, find a way to contact me and I can direct you to those services. Uh, one of our counselors spoke to us faculty, spoke to the faculty 
last semester, I mean last semester, last week during our faculty get together and she was begging us to tell you guys, please have them come talk to me because there are places I can direct them to. One of the more important parts of the syllabus is technical help uh, because this is an online class. Where do I need to go for technical help? And the answer is OTS, which is basically the IT department for, for Lone Star. If you're having issues with D2L, the last person you should ask is me. Why? Because this is an online class and it's expected that you have all the tools necessary to complete everything online. If you are having D2L issues, the very first person you should contact is OTS. You can do that through their chat services, VTech Chat. You can do that via email. You can do that through their website, or you can call their number. One of the things that online students tend to do if an issue happens is say something is wrong with D2L. And I will just be straight up honest with you about this. If D2L has an issue, meaning the entire D2L system, the very first people to know about it is the faculty, and then we adjust from there. And just an FYI, the last time we've had issues with D2L was probably 2014. If you have issues with D2L, it's probably because of your wireless speed or your internet speed. It's not actually D2L itself. However, if you feel that you can't find certain things, you can't open certain things, or certain things are timing out on you, then you need to contact OTS, contact the IT department. And if there is an issue, they will do one of two things. Number one, they will let me know. Or number two, they will give you some sort of ticket number and then you email me back with the ticket number, okay? Same thing goes for Connect. If you have an issue with Connect, you need to contact uh, the Connect IT department, get a ticket number, and then give me your ticket number. So how will you be graded in this class? Discussion boards are a very huge part of uh, the online presence. Remember, with discussion boards, you're taking the place of face-to-face -face interaction in the classroom. So each discussion module is worth 15 points. For each module, you'll have questions that you need to answer. You'll have anywhere from three to five questions. Typically, it's four or five. And usually the way I divide it out is I give you some questions that are analysis based, meaning they're content analysis based straight from the, the text or the reading material. Uh, and they're asking you to analyze information. And then the other parts, the other questions or the other remaining questions will be your personal experiences, your thought process. How do you conceptualize certain things? Each question doesn't have to be 500 words. When it says your initial post should be a minimum of 500 words, that's total your answer for all of the questions, for all four or five questions. And something else I want you to be aware of, putting in the actual question that I give you in order to meet the 500 word count does not count, okay? So it's your answers must uh, add up to 500 words for all of the questions total. There's something that implemented called a first post due date. With the first post due date, it's the due date that your very first post answering the discussion board questions is due. And the reason uh, I put this into my online classes is it prevents you from posting everything at like 11.50 p.m. on the very last day of the module. When we do that or when you do that, it doesn't allow for your classmates to interact with you because now they're, they're not able to fulfill their duty of responding to two other classmates. Why? Because everyone posts at the very last minute. So if you don't post for the first post due date, uh, that's an automatic minus five before I even start grading. The first post due date will be in one of two areas. It's either on the course calendar, which the course calendar is not going to change, I don't think, and it's going to be implemented or embedded into the module itself, bolded in the module, so you'll see it there. And then you need to reply to at least two of your classmates. Both replies must meet the 150 word minimum word count. You are more than welcome to reply to uh, more than two classmates, but I will only grade two of them. And at least two of them must meet the minimum of 150 words. So for example, Let's say you reply to four classmates, but 
all four of your replies are only like 75 words each. Well, that doesn't meet the minimum and points will be deducted. So be aware of that. Uh, you'll be writing reflection papers. These reflection essays are just application of what's something you learned in uh, one of the chapters we've just discussed and how to apply that to your personal life. We'll do a looking glass project explaining uh, how you see yourself and how uh, you seeing yourself influences your relationships with other people. You'll be writing a poem project. You don't have to be some sort of scholarly author to do this. Uh, this typically is the, uh, typically the favorite of uh, some of my students and they, they really like this. So uh, we'll be uploading that poem project to the discussion board here in the next couple of, couple of months. One of your major assignments is the movie analysis paper. And you have three movies to choose from, Crash, The Blind Side, and The Help. Um, if you want to get started early and watch one of these movies, or if you've already watched one of these movies, well, great. Uh, more information will be given at a later date about those movie analysis projects. And I try to open that at a pretty decent time because it's such a huge chunk of your final grade. There are three exams in this class, no exam reviews. There's a final exam, uh, 12 quizzes over each of the 12 chapters, a syllabus quiz over this particular syllabus that if you do not take before the due date, you will be dropped from the course. I do take plagiarism seriously. If you plagiarize in this class, the first offense will be given a zero for the assignment. The second offense, you will be ported to the vice president uh, of instruction and the vice president of student success, and then they will decide whether to suspend you or expel you from um, Lone Star College. And then this is how it adds up your points. I do the point system in my class because number one, you can always add up the points at any point to determine what your grade is in my class. And you can also see that on your grade section of D2L. It will always be open, so you will always have a real live uh, look at your current grade, your current grade at all times in the course. And the other reason I do the points is because uh, at your four-year universities, most of them do points as well. And once again, this is the course calendar. If I change anything, it's to give you more time. If I do change something, I always communicate with you to let you know what has been changed. However, we're probably going to stick to this. So if you want to print out this course calendar along with the syllabus and write it in your date book, in your calendar, the calendar on your iPhone, uh, some of you might need to take off work for certain days that uh, things are due. Go ahead and do that because this is not going to change, uh, most likely. So just be aware of that. So when we talk about taking an online class, there are some uh, myths about taking an online class that I want to do, that I want to make you aware of. Number one, Taking online class doesn't mean work at your own pace. Now, I, I should say it's kind of 50-50 here. Can you wake up at three in the morning and do an assignment? That answer is yes, you could do that. So that's technically working at your own pace. However, there are due dates for assignments, just like in a face-to-face -face class. Online classes aren't set up to where you can just turn in an assignment whenever you want, and then you turn in all of your assignments at the end of the semester. That's not how it works. There have to be due dates uh, and structurization within the online class itself in order to uh, increase and maximize learning. Uh, another myth, there's more work or there's less work in an online course. I've heard a student say, I think Professor Stewart gives us more work than his face-to-face -face class. And I immediately jumped in on the discussion board and said, no, actually I don't. You guys are doing the exact same things they're doing. Um, for example, the discussion board questions they have to answer these questions, but they these are the questions that I ask them in front of the entire class and people have to answer and they get graded based on that. So it's the exact same assignments that my face-to-face -face classes are doing. So it's not any less work and it's not any more work. I think a bunch of people take online classes because they don't want to communicate or they don't want to interact with their classmates. Uh, they, they may see themselves as being introverted. And my response to that is you still have to interact with your class uh, classmates on an online class. We do that through the discussion board, through uh, online participation. Uh, without class interaction, there is no learning in the class. Uh, you'd just be doing something on your own and that doesn't maximize learning and, and that doesn't create a positive learning environment. So you do have to communicate with your classmates in an online course. And one of the final myths that I hear all the time is online is either easier or it's harder. Keep in mind, I'm taking online classes for my PhD, uh, or I took online classes for my PhD, 
And there were times where I thought the online classes were harder, and there were times where I thought the online classes were easier. Uh, it, it really just depends on you. I, I just think they're delivered differently. Uh, there is no easier or harder version. It's just a de different delivery method. So I hope going over this syllabus, I hope going over these myths help explain uh, a little bit more about the class. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me uh, or post it onto the discussion board, the course question discussion board that will always be open throughout the entirety of the semester. And I look forward to having you in this class and I think you're going to learn a lot about uh, why relationships in the past haven't worked, how you communicate in relationships, and how a successful communication relationships should be in order to make those relationships succeed.